This pole has conductors at two different voltage levels. At the top are sub-transmission lines. In this system, the sub-transmission voltage is 69 kV. Keep in mind that this voltage and the others we'll be discussing may be different from those in your system. Below the sub-transmission lines are two three-phase primary circuits. One circuit is here, and the other is here. In this system, both primary circuits are 13 kV. The lowest line on this pole is the system neutral, which is grounded. System neutrals are grounded at various locations through pole grounds connected to ground rods driven into the earth. The voltage levels of the circuits on a pole can usually be identified by the type and size of insulators. In this example, the 69 kV circuit has post-type insulators. The 13 kV primary has pin-type insulators. And the neutral has a spool-type insulator. As you can see, it's easy to tell the three types apart by their size and shape. The 69 kV is much larger than the 13 kV, and the spool type is smaller than both of them. Many poles, of course, carry more complex circuit arrangements than the one we've just seen. Let's use a simplified illustration to show some other circuit configurations you may come across. On this pole, the sub-transmission circuit is here. One primary circuit is here. A good way to distinguish between circuits of different voltage levels is to check the spacing between them. The sub-transmissions in this system are six feet from the primaries. The primaries are four feet apart. And the bottom primary is four feet from the neutral. Here's another way two primary circuits can be arranged. In this configuration, these three conductors on the left make one primary circuit. And these three on the right make up another. Each circuit is supported by two different cross arms. This type of primary arrangement is often called a triangle circuit. Triangle circuits can also look like this. One conductor up and two below. Keep in mind that there are many other circuit configurations besides those we've shown you. Make sure you've identified which circuit is which before you climb a pole to work on them. Okay. Let's move on now to another potential electrical hazard you should identify before climbing, ground wires and grounded equipment. When working on overhead lines, you must remain isolated from all grounds and grounded equipment. You do that either by keeping a sufficient distance from them or by covering them if you're forced to work close to them. If you don't stay isolated and happen to come in contact with a ground wire while working on an energized circuit, you could become the path to ground. Let's take a look at a couple of examples that's grounded. The case of this transformer is connected to the ground system neutral by this wire, which runs from the transformer's case ground lug to the system neutral. So a lineman working near this transformer should make sure to stay isolated from both the ground transformer case. Lightning arresters are also grounded. They're connected to ground rods driven into earth, and sometimes to the grounded system neutral as well. The lightning arrestor on this pole protects equipment from damage due to electrical surges. It's also a good idea to check and make sure all ground wires are intact before you go up a pole. In particular, make sure lightning arrestor grounds are connected. If they're not, you should follow your company's procedures on reconnecting them. Also, check to see that any energized jumpers are not touching other components or are not too close to the space you'll be working in so you don't accidentally make contact with them. Now that we've discussed several electrical hazards to work, let's see how a lineman would go about creating a safe working area. On this pole, a lineman is going to replace. The upper arm has three through-going primaries. Below it is a double arm. Three dead-ended primaries are attached here at 90 degrees. Jumpers connect the through-going conductors with the dead-ended conductors. This guts the strain of the dead conductors. As a final safety check before going up the pole, the lineman will look for structural and electric hazards. Once he's on the pole, he'll rubber off or cover 
all conductors, energized components, and grounds that he could come in contact with to provide a safe work area. We'll show using hand-applied rubber gear, but keep in mind that some companies may require hot in a situation like this. So be sure to follow your company's regulations. He started the job by covering the system neutral with line hose and putting a blanket over the neutral spool. Next, he covered the guy wire because it's grounded and put line hose and blankets over the primary dead ends and insulators on the lower cross arms. The insulators on the upper cross arm are covered with hoods and the conductors are covered with hose. He's put a blanket on this conductor to cover the irregularly shaped jumper connection. He's now ready to begin replacing the cross arm. Every energized component, conductor, and ground near his work, so he can't accidentally make contact with any of them. Now you've seen how to prepare a safe work area. In the next part of the program, we'll see some of the tools you'll use in overhead line maintenance. We'll watch a lineman resag a conductor and in the process, see how to safely use a hot hoist, a wire grip, and a hand line.